Bibles today. We want to uh, to look for a few moments. I know it's about 11 o'clock, and like I said, it's just one of those that uh, I knew the service would be a little different, um, but I knew the, the service would be something special. Jeanette, it's something whenever we're kind of just at a low point that the Lord shows up at a high point, and He just demonstrates Himself and uh, in a really powerful and strong way. I do want to share with you at the end of the service, I've just felt led that at some point we're going to have a time of prayer for you, a time of prayer for one another. And uh, if you've been on that list, and maybe you didn't even let anybody know what's going on, but you feel that you need special prayer, uh, we would consider it an honor uh, to pray with you and, and to pray for you at the end of the service. So, I'm looking at the clock and I'm trying to assess uh, how much that I will share of this message today. But let me just kind of get right into it. It's Hebrews chapter 2, as you can turn there. Uh, those of you that are faithful to the U version, I didn't even have time to get that up. And so uh, please give me a little bit of grace and mercy. I did not get those notes um, into that with the uh, events of this week. But today I, I sense that all of us need to hear this truth. And for most of us, it's, it's a reminder. It's, it's kind of a course correction, all right? We know that sometimes we get out of sync or out of, out of tune or out of touch. I remember less 25 years ago. I remember 25 years ago I was at general counsel. And I remember that I could not see out on... The vision, the screen, uh, I, I, I saw two, two images kind of blurred, and I, I kept trying to do this. Tammy, what's going on? I can't, I, mean, I didn't even have glasses then. I was just rubbing my eyes, and I'm like trying to look up there, and, and that was the first time that I noted that I had a blurred vision, just uh, needed to go to the eye doctor. Something wasn't right. I didn't know what it was until they examined and then course corrected and then provided me my first set of glasses, first pair. I've had many since then, I've lost many <laughs> along the way. Anybody else, you lose them on rides and you lose them in, in, in the ocean and other crazy places because you think you got to have them. And uh, it helps with your vision. It really helps you to stay focused. This message today, in its sincere briefness, is meant to help us stay focused during this season. We have three weeks, Sherry, until Christmas, 21 days until Christmas. Between now and then, we are going to have a blur of events. We're going to have just uh, people scurrying here and there. You might be even in that group. You might even feel stressed and pulled and torn. And, and you're, you're, you're going to be bouncing all around with, with tasks, and with events, and with parties, and going to school plays, and, and band, and all of these things. Man, it's just a crazy busy month. And with the type of week that personally I've been through, and I know that many of you have been through, we need to hear that our central focus is not to the left and to the right. You can get blurred and you can get distracted, but you need to stay fixed and focused on Jesus, the central person and figure that we need to have our hearts and uh, our lives centered on Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords. Simply, the question is, do you see Jesus? Do you see, see Jesus? Do you hear Jesus? Do you know that he is with you? Do you know that with Jesus, it calms and it brings a sense of rest and peace? Friday night in the room, the intensive care room where Jonas was. On one side was a daughter-in-law, on the other side was Dorcas, crying, crying, crying. Wasn't much I could say. Wasn't much I could do. But you know what really 
minister, Gene, in that moment. I didn't know what else to say, but I said, Jesus. First I said it low. I didn't want to startle anybody. It got a little bit louder. And as I picked up with the strength of his name, do you know what happened? Dorcas had a sense of quietness and rest. Her crying uncontrollably at least ceased a moment. It, 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 it got up again, and then I, I had to come back and just say, Jesus, oh, Jesus. Jesus, we need you. Jesus, we trust you. Jesus, we don't understand, but Jesus, Jesus. Just that the mention of his name brings a sense of calm and peace. And even in the season in this point of the year, as it might look blurred, as you stay fixed and focused, thank you, Pastor Josh, it's, it's right there, clear. We need to see Jesus because Jesus will help us through. Jesus will give us his strength. Jesus will minister what we need. Jesus will lift us up when we're down. That's when we're able to be strong. December points us to our Savior. We celebrate the birthday of a king. Our culture wants to celebrate everything else. We need church. We need a center and focus on Jesus. It's so much going on. So many things are taking place that could divert us and distract us and allow our vision to grow smaller and more blurred. But we're asking, the Lord is asking us today to let our vision of Jesus become larger, greater, more significant. Don't let the secularization, could I even say, don't let the paganism of this country and of this land, let it persuade you to have a smaller glimpse of who Jesus is. Jesus is the central reason for not only this season, but for our entire life. Keep looking unto Jesus. The Holy Spirit helps us, draws us into that clear focus. If we had a double, if we had a blurred, if it's, if it's uh, not clear, he helps to talk about, lift up Jesus. John chapter 16, verse 13 and 14 in the message. But when the friend comes, the spirit of the truth, he will take you by the hand, guide you into all the truth there is. He won't draw attention to himself, but will make sense out of what is about to happen. And indeed, out of all that I have done and said, he will honor me. This is Jesus. The Holy Spirit will honor me. He will take from me and deliver it to you. The Holy Spirit is going to draw us to attention to see Jesus. Do you see him? Do you see him? Do you clearly see Jesus Christ in a world spinning out of control, chaos, confusion, broken government, quest for control, a lot of eyes looking at the Georgia Senate runoff election, on and on it goes. We sense our world in especially... U.S. of A, division, dissension, unrest. Such, such problems with all the things that I could mention and name. It just is a world spinning out of control. Man has lost touch. Man has lost control, but God hasn't. Jesus Christ is the one that is leading and the one that is guiding and he wants us to be under his authority. He doesn't want our heart to, to fear like all the others as they look at and as they hear and as they listen and as they see the events of this world and the chatter, the ungodly chatter of this world, the stuff that is happening in our world, divert us from allegiance, loyalty, love, faithfulness, and obedience to Jesus Christ. We can't let that happen. Look, chapter 1, verse 25 and 26, it says this, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts 
failing them for fear, for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Yes, there is a lot of people that have been gripped with fear by what has been seen. But you know what? I believe they either haven't seen Jesus or they have gotten they have gotten blurred and diverted from who he is. Today, as we look at Hebrews, could you turn there quickly? And it's just simply one phrase, one line that just kind of leaps out. That if I can just for a few minutes, give me a few moments to share about seeing Jesus can change everything. Chapter 2. Hebrews, and then beginning there at verse number 6. But there is a place where someone has testified, What is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man, that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the angels. You crowned him with glory and honor and put everything under his feet. And putting everything under him, God left nothing that is not subject to him. Yet at present, we do not see everything subject to him. How many would agree to that? We don't see everything subject or under his authority. But, could you say this next phrase with me loud and with real power? But we see Jesus. Say it again. But we see Jesus. He was made a little lower. Then the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death so that by the grace of God, he might taste death, death for every one. There it is. A lot of confusion, a lot that hasn't come under control, a lot that haven't surrendered, submitted to his lordship. And that's why there is so much spinning going on, failing them, their hearts for fear. But if we can see Jesus and if we can hear and know that Jesus is central, just by speaking his word brings a sense of rest and peace. Anybody ever remember, some of you youngins, you won't know this, the song that was sung by an incredible musician called Andre Crouch. Anybody remember Andre Crouch? Put your hands up there. You're going to show your age. Might even have a little gray there. But Andre Crouch, he was an incredible singer. One of the songs that he sang was, Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him, there's no other. Why? Jesus is the way. If you have some questions, anybody have questions? We all do. If you have some questions in the corners of your mind and traces of discouragement and peace you cannot find, Jesus is the answer. Do you see him? Do you see him? Because if you do, then uh, the questions begin to kind of fall away. They disintegrate. They dissolve. You might have them, but when you see Jesus, things are okay because he is the Lord of all, and he is in control. Reflection, back to the song, reflection of the old past. They seem to face you every day. There's one thing I know for sure that Jesus is the way. He goes on another verse. I know you got mountains that you think you cannot climb. Anybody there? Oh, come on. There's some mountains we just, wow, we just don't think we can climb. I know that you have skies have been dark. You think the sun won't shine. In case you didn't know, I'm here to tell you that the word of God is true. Everything that he's promised, he will do it for you. Jesus is the answer. For our world today, above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Amen. Do you see Jesus? Can you see him clearly? Can you hear his word? Can you hear his reassurance? Can you hear his, his confidence that with him all things are possible and that he's going to work out? Even if you can't see it, he's behind the scenes. He's behind the wall working in the master control room, all of the pieces together for each and every one of you. 
If you're here today, God loves you. He's for you. He's not against you. He's got things in, uh, in motion. Some of you might not even know who Jesus is. Who is this Jesus you're talking about? Oh, I hope that you will meet him, and I hope that you will come to find him as your Savior and Lord before it's too late. Jonas did. He sat right over here. Was he next to you or behind you? I know he was right over here last Sunday. His family right there. Man, he's got a different worship seat today. He is in heaven. Hallelujah. He's in heaven rejoicing, not sick any longer. A heart. My goodness, God gave him a new body for people who know who he is have lived for him and followed him and served him and are faithful to him, the, the life changes completely. Do you see Jesus? I've got four people that have seen Jesus, and I probably maybe only just get to a couple of them. But I want you to turn with me, and I want you to look in Scripture, Matthew chapter 14. Would you turn there? As well, it might be on the screen. But first of all, I want you to remember one of the disciples of Jesus who saw Jesus. His name was Peter. Peter saw the Lord, saw Jesus. He's with his disciples. And I'll read from Matthew 14, verse 23. Then afterwards, he went up into the hills to pray. Night fell and out of the lake. On the lake, the disciples were in trouble. For the wind had risen and there were fighting heavy seas. About four o'clock in the morning, Jesus came to them walking on the water. They screamed in terror. Could you have just heard the piercing scream? For they thought that he was a ghost. The disciples thinking he was a ghost. Jesus immediately spoke to them, reassuring them, don't be afraid, he said. Then Peter called to him, sir, if it, if it really is you, tell me to come over to you walking on the water. All right. The Lord called his bluff. All right, come on along. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water to Jesus. Why? He saw Jesus, and that's all that really mattered in that moment. Everything else was peripheral. Everything else was just a, was just a, a second thing, but his main fix was seeing Jesus. And as long as he saw Jesus, wow, he did amazing, miraculous things like walking on the water. Yeah, he was more courageous than the other disciples in the boat that day. In spite of everything, the, the spray from all of the waves, uh, he wanted to see Jesus right up close and personal, and he wanted to be right with him. Call me. Let me come. Come, Jesus said, and he came. As soon as, as he's now walking on the water, his eyes turned to the left and right, and the ways became more paramount, more pressing. He saw his life kind of go quickly before his eyes, and it's like, yikes! He got on to the problem. What does it say in verse number 30? This is the Living Bible. But when he looked around at the high waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Save me, Lord. And he fell, and he plummeted, and he went into the water until, of course, Jesus said, Come on, Peter. <laughs> Reached out his hand, got him up, back into the boat. As long as you and I keep our focus, especially, especially now, the world is trying so hard to get us looking at this and that and the other thing. All the negatives, all the hurt, all the pain, all the division, all the unrest. Get us to look away and center in on those things. As long as we keep our eyes on him, you know what? The smile on your face and the joy in your heart will be resounding and strong and true and keep you fixed and focused. Number two, Stephen. Remember Stephen? I want you to look at Acts chapter 6 and 7. First of all, Acts 6, 8. One of the men that was chosen in the church who knows whether he was a new member an older member but he was a respected member and uh, there was a an issue going on when widows were not being cared for he along with others was selected because of his faithfulness and obedience to go ahead and 
watch over the daily distribution of food. Acts 6 verse 8 tells about what type of a man Stephen was. Now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, he performed great wonders and signs among the people. This was the Stephen that we're now looking at. Some looking at his life were jealous, jealous of his relationship, jealous of his maybe position, jealous of what he was able to do, and brought serious accusations against him. Then we even find that in the scripture, it says in the message translation, whenever he was speaking and sharing and talking about Jesus, starting with Abraham, Father Abraham, remember him, all the way down through Moses, and he kind of had this wonderful ministry, message and sermon. And as he spoke and shared, the Bible says in the message, the crowd went wild, foaming. Really just seething with anger, furious at him. And the crowd were Christ haters, and they surrounded him, not with just their presence, but they also grabbed stones, big stones from off the side of the road and began to hurl it at him. Stones being hurled at Stephen. His body began to be pelted with this, and... uh, Immediately, his body was wounded greatly. Acts chapter 7, look at verse 55 and 56. I just want you to see what one glimpse and one vision in whatever setting that you're in can do to change, to change the tide of the perspective of what you're in. Acts 7, 55, 56. But Stephen... Full of the Holy Spirit, that's a key. <laughs> you got to be full of the Holy Spirit with whatever's going on and keep your eyes on Jesus. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, he looked up to heaven in the midst of what's going on, saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. I see Jesus. <laughs> Everything going on. Man, he's getting pelted. He's getting hit. It's hurting. These are not foam stones, Adam. It's the real deal. Piercing, sharp, cutting stones that are being thrown at him. And he looks up and he focuses and fixes his attention on Jesus. Knowing that death could be right around the corner he knows that one look at his full and wonderful face can change everything I'm going to ask another group of you and some of you again might be a small group percentage because I'm going to go back to the vault of some of the hymns that have been unlocked and so in this particular hymn Pastor Josh we might know it we might not but I remember this being sung when we see Christ was the title let me just share a few of the words From that old hymn that says, it will be worth it all when we see Jesus. If you know it, maybe just sing or at least word with me. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. I better not sing because I'm not a good singer. (laughs) One glimpse of his dear face. All sorrow will erase, so bravely run the race, Jim, till we see Christ, it will be worth, let's close your eyes, when we see Jesus, life's trials will seem so small. When we see Christ, one glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you see Jesus? 
do we really see him in the midst of today's struggle? The battle that you're in, the struggle that you're in, the sickness that seems to have a vice grip hold, a financial battle struggle, the issues, the problems, the grief, all of that, is it keeping you away from seeing who he is that's in the middle of the storm with you? As long as we keep our eyes on Jesus, guess what? You can walk on the water over the issues and the problems, and, and it's underneath your feet, and it's underneath uh, his control. But as soon as you take your eyes uh, and begin to let it uh, Fixed to what's going on, the whirling, swirling, hurricane-like force uh, of wind that's whipping up and uh, is rocking you from the water, it is going to take you down. The Lord always is there, though, with a hand, Nick, <laughs> Teresa, to hold us up and to get us back to safety. He's always there. Would you bow your eyes? Bow and close your eyes before the Lord as the musicians come. They're ready because I have asked them to prepare for a moment that we kind of refocus our sight, our, our position, our, our standing as people of God. Now, again, I have mentioned earlier, if you don't know who Jesus is or are not currently following Jesus, well, then the Holy Spirit has to pierce your heart and show you that you are running away from His will and way for your life. He loves you, and He's not going to let up on pursuing after you to see that you are one of His children and that heaven is going to be your home. We have to be ready. We have to be on guard and we have to have spiritual preparations in place. Heaven is not for everyone. Not everybody goes to heaven. Only those that have made Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior and said, Jesus, be my Savior. I know that I'm a sinner. I need you to forgive me and cleanse me with your precious. But only those that have done that will enter in to the streets of gold. So, as they begin to play with your eyes that are simply closed, your heads that are bowed in a position of reverence and hearing from God, my first challenge today is, are you a part of his family? Do you know him as Savior? Or do you just know about him and what people have said, cursing his name, dishonoring his name, bringing him into places that he should not be brought into in their conversation. Do you know Jesus? Can you really see that he at this moment is reaching out to you with those nail-scarred hands? Yes, the ones that were, that were nailed to an old rugged cross. You ask, why did he do that? He did that because he loves you. He cares for you. He wants to see you born again and he wants to see you saved and set free. Sin will keep you. Sin will bind you. Sin will allow you to be separated from God forever. But through what Jesus did in his act of love on the cross, he provided for you a gift. It's a gift of salvation. He wants to set you free from this ugly curse and law the law of sin and death. And if you want to receive Jesus as your personal Savior today, would you just slip up that hand? Nobody should be looking around. It's just you. It's just me. It's just the Holy Spirit. It's just God in this moment. Just lift up a hand. Say, Pastor, would you, would you pray? Would you remember me today? I'm not ready. I'm not ready for eternity. I'm not even ready for next month, let alone the future. But I know that Jesus is speaking to me right here and right now. Just lift up your hand and just simply say, Pastor, would you pray for me? Thank you, Lord. Then I'm going to, I'm going to believe that each one has made the right choice to declare Jesus as Savior and Lord. But the question that we started with is the question that I guess I want to end with is, how is your sight of Jesus now? 
in the midst of the swirling storm and in an, a, a situation of our world wanting to divert and point to other things, are you still seeing Jesus high and lifted up? In the midst of things that are hurled at you, it might not be real stones, but you know what? Words, accusations, it might be ugly things, comments that are hurled at you. Are you still fixed with your focus on Jesus Christ? Because if you do, friends, you're going to be just fine. You're going to be okay. You're going to hear his voice. You're going to go ahead and just feel his arms of love wrap around you guard you protect you provide for you and nurture you so if you want to see Jesus clear if you want to have moments of just prayer with with believers on your behalf I just really really sense I told people I said I I don't know what God wants to do and I don't know how this will turn out but I truly know that God wants to speak and he wants to do something in our hearts and lives. So if you'll give him a few moments, he's going to transform your situation. He's going to give you from double vision to clear vision. You can see things clearly. You get a look in his wonderful face. Everything else pales into a clear sight of who Jesus is. So as they just begin to sing this beautiful song, I want you, if you need a special prayer, if you just want to plant yourself at an altar, maybe you're saying that, you know what, I just got to get alone. I just got to, I got to, I got to fix my own heart and mind on Jesus Christ. You do that because this is how I want to end the service today. Would you come as they begin to sing this song?
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Stand and just let's close with this song. Come on, come on, stand up and let's just sing this worship. What a Savior, Jesus, to see him high and lift it up. Isn't he wonderful, church? Yes, he is. You got to sing. If you don't sing, don't let the devil get any victory. You've got to sing, sing, sing. Hallelujah. Lord of all, King of kings. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. I want to say thanks to Melissa for helping today lead in worship. Come on, just express some love. <laughs> Pastor Lexi, Chad are in Memphis. Uh, there's a wedding that they're a part of. Uh, that's where they're at today, in case you're wondering. And for those involved in the musical and the production, there will be no practice today. So today, you'll get a break. Um, and I just pray that uh, you'll continue to uphold the family of Jonas and his wife and family. And be ready to serve. Um, don't know the details, but I know in the past, you've always been so good if we've asked for parts and, and pieces of that meal to come together uh, it's just beautiful to see us all rally so let's be there if you can uh, either a visitation or the service to surround them with our love let me pray over you father i i just bless the people of god lord gathered here at o'fallon assembly and i ask that god you would use them that lord you would flow through them and you would help their vision to be crystal clear as their focusing and lord moving from wherever they were to centered and stabilized upon you let that change us lord let that uh, let that just transform us and give us an incredible month help us to lead people to jesus that's our prayer and our desire we give you the glory and the praise and all of god's people said Greet one another in the love of the Lord, and we will see you on Wednesday.